good morning. I wanted to come in and show, I'm going to try to talk quietly, so if you can't hear me, let me know and I'll speak up. There's a massage going on at the end of the hall here. We also have a little spa in this area, so I don't want to interrupt anyone's, you know, massage session, but also want you to be able to hear what, what I have to say so that there's not uh, any kind of conflict with that. Good morning, Candy. So, I feel like such a dummy. I'm, I'm going to try to move this a little bit closer. I feel like such a dummy about this chair. Oh my gosh. Not a dummy because I wonked it up because what I did was put my uh, big top over it before the um, black paint was dry. So, let me pick this up. Let me. These areas, mostly these red ones I can talk to you about now that have the paint smeared in them. Apparently, the gray wasn't dry either. While well, I was trying to decide whether to leave that and let this look distressed or whether to paint it back right. And this morning, oh, I'm such a doofus. Let me bring this back and I'll show you. I had bought this wrapping paper. I got two rolls of it at Tractor Supply um, to do the back wall on our window display. And I was looking at it and I'm like, Oh my goodness, there's no gray in there. That's just like a lighter shade of black. I wasn't supposed to put gray on the chair. What was I thinking? So, <clears throat> most of the buffalo plaid or buffalo check stuff that I had been doing had been black and white, so it had had the gray. So my mind was just thinking there. And who knows what it was thinking, but it wasn't thinking about how this was supposed to be. So that was actually a blessing in disguise because it's been a couple of days since I've been able to work on this. And this morning I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get some black on my brush. And this is um, DIY Little Black Dress. And I'm going to go over those gray areas to make them look more black gray instead of gray gray. Not completely, I mean, I'm not gonna try to solidify the thing, but I did that and I love it more already. It's looking more authentic and it's not messing with uh, the look of the chair. But then I had these gray spindles and these gray ones under here. So I've already um, dry brushed on here. You think I'm too loud for the massage? I've already dry brushed on here to sort of blacken that up. Hey, Tanya. Ma'am? I have the noise machine. Ma okay, great, great. We have a noise machine, so I can talk a little bit louder with the noise machine. But anyways, if you've not dry brushed before, you barely stick the tip of your brush down in your paint. Get off any, get off any excess. And then dab it off on something. You don't want hardly any paint on here at all. And then just sort of scrape back and forth over it. So right now I'm doing that with the, with the black on all of the gray areas. And trying to stay in a straight line. I'm, I'm so thrilled with this. I'm glad I didn't try to mess with it yesterday because I wouldn't have thought of this yesterday. So now for the most part, all of that is covered up, but here's what I decided to do with the red. Um, I'm using DIY uh, Carnival Red on this because I thought it was because it was the more of the blue red, but apparently it's more of the orange red and I just can't tell the difference because my eyes are old. Same thing, I'm barely gonna dip my brush in there, get a little bit on the tip, swap off the excess, dab off the excess on a rag, but instead of trying to cover this whole uh, square, I'm just darkening up the centers. I may be able to do that with more on there, but I want the roughness of this um, chip brush to sort of show through and help me because that way it'll still look more uh, aged and rugged and all that, but it won't be as much like, oh man, I smeared the paint on that. And 
I can promise you. Thank you, Sandy. I can promise you that I'm going to let the paint dry all the way this time before I try to top coat it. But I will put another coat of DIY uh, Big Top on it when I'm done. And if you've never tried uh, DIY paint, it's a clay-based paint and it doesn't have um, a sealer in it. So you always have to seal it. And what I did with this chair before was try to put my sealer on. Um, before my paint was dry because I was in a hurry to go home. Um, but the benefit of that is, if you want to, say I put too much of this on here right now, I can come back with just water, just a baby wipe or a wet rag or whatever, and wipe some of it off. It's it's not, nothing's final until, until it has a, a wax or a poly or something like that on it. So, I believe that you know, having used the DIY paint on this and going back and changing it in this way has definitely saved my my sanity, if not my project. So everywhere that there was a little bit, I'll hold it up there again, everywhere that there was a little bit of the gray coming through from me smearing it, that's what I'm dabbing a little bit of red in the center of here. Trying to make it look more natural. But but still time worn and aged. I also took my uh, black brush on this and sort of framed it out and went all the way around the edges. It's not pointing in the right direction. I framed it out and went all the way around the edges inside and out, all the way around the edges here like this. And then same thing on the corners of the uh, the legs, just to sort of tie it all together a little bit more. I'll make sure I get all of these and don't miss them, just because I'm excited that I found a new idea. So, what I recommend about this is if you do something and then it doesn't turn out to be what you wanted and what you planned, you don't have to immediately um, change it. Give it a day or two, and another idea may pop up that's better than the idea that you had to begin with, and it'll work out for you, and it just takes a little bit of time for your mind to sort of play on it there and figure out the best plan of action, but just trust your judgment I'm always in a hurry. I'm not wanting to um, wait on anything, hence is why I put the top coat on this to begin with too early. But had I tried to fix this yesterday, I would have been trying to make this perfect and spent a whole lot more time on it, and it wouldn't have been near as good of a project. So I'm thankful that I was too busy yesterday to mess with it. So the DIY paint is going to dry uh, lighter than it looks whenever I'm putting it on here because of the clay base and the minerals and chalk that are in it. But when I put the top coat back on here, like this you can still see all has a top coat on it because I'm not having to redo it. But um, when I put the top coat on it, it, this will all brighten up and it'll all be an even red. See if I can tilt this up to where you can see it real good. So here we go. And I'll put a photograph on it on my Instagram page and, you know, and on here too whenever it's done. But I'm happy with it now. That's much better than I would have got day one. I also wanted to show you that because I had to leave kind of quickly yesterday. I did, I used uh, Dixie Bell paint in oh what's it called mermaid tail all over this thing it was a cream color natural it was old it had had um, numbers written on it with a marker smells like uh, I used something inside of it to make it not smell now but it smelled like uh, mothballs in there but I covered uh, completely one afternoon I'm like I'm gonna do something to this thing and I'm gonna do something crazy to it let's see if I can back you up a little bit and 
I'm like, before I leave today, I'm going to do something. So, I'm like, this is the totally most unexpected thing I could probably do. Let's see if I can straighten you up a little. And uh, so, I covered it in uh, Dixie Belle uh, mermaid tail. And the thing that's so awesome about Dixie Belle is the opposite of what's awesome about DIY is this is acrylic based. So, it's not going to wash off. It's, I, don't, I don't even have to put a top coat if I don't want to. So, but I can. I can change the look of everything with waxes and things like that. And so I went home over the weekend and I'm like, what else am I going to do to that thing that I don't even know what is? I don't know what to do with. I'm hoping this is not stuck. It's got two big drawers. I guess those are cherubs um, on it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try another new technique. So yesterday I put on petroleum jelly in several different areas. All the areas that you see back here that are in the, uh, the teal mermaid tail color. This is peony. Is this pink color. Um, I was able, I did wet distressing, which you still can do with Dixie Belle. Let me see that one. Which you still can do with Dixie Belle, but it's done differently. It, or it's not done differently. You have to do it immediately. You have to, if you're going to wet distress Dixie Belle, you have to paint it. And then just as soon as it starts drying, you, um, wet distress it. And I did that, this cherub, with some baby wipes. And, uh, they still are as a matter of fact but anyway so I wiped this off and then I used my sander and I didn't have I probably should have used like a 120 grit and this is a 220 but anyway so I sanded off on the areas where I had put the petroleum jelly and the pink paint uh, resisted in those areas and let the teal come through so I can still and probably still will sand here and there but just with the regular sander, if you can see there, it's going back to the white or the cream color paint. Sorry about that, I had a phone call. So anyway, I'll come back. I'm gonna do something cool to the knobs. We'll figure that out. I'm gonna put the same ones back on there, but I'll, uh, and probably wax it and burnish it. But uh, that's my husband and I know he's gonna call back. So let me go ahead and show you my haul real quick. Have no idea what I'm going to do with this. I didn't need these, but these were a dollar a piece at a garage sale. Um, and they let me use their bathroom and I needed to buy something. <laughs> so this is what I bought. One says farm truck, one says dealer, sportsman paradise, trailer, and another dealer. And I've seen all kinds of crafts using these. Haven't decided if y'all have an idea of what I should do with them. I have five of them. I could cut them into strips or I could bend them for house tops or something help me figure out that um these are kind of cute there's a, a place closing down in jasper texas and i drove over this past weekend this was normally 625 so it was half price and i got two of them bird's nest i'm going to use one on a, a wrapping of a sign i'm gonna i'm getting a sign that one of the ladies here in our art of the market makes yes bird houses is a good idea sandy um, and I'm gonna put a decorative bow on it. My best friend's mom passed away and I wanna make something special to bring to the funeral home. So I'm gonna work on that later. And if it, this isn't too big, I'll put this in there because it, I, I believe it'll be special. I got, this frame is very heavy um, and nice and I'll probably paint it some way, but I got it for a dollar and see how the sticker is still on it. I think that's the only reason the people got rid of it because why would you get rid of a fancy heavy um, metal frame like this that obviously hadn't been used because part of a sticker is still under there. So I'll get that sticker off. And me and that, me and that frame will have some fun together. And this have no idea what to do with it but it is heavy and it looks tarnished it's probably not real silver but um looks like real silver and it was regularly twelve dollars i got it for six i'll probably use it in staging some of my pieces for the holidays got another one of the bird's nests but this is this is the cool thing i got this is what i don't know what in the world i'm going to do with and i've got 20 of them because my granddaughter counted them out for me these were, apparently there was an ice cream company, or sharpet company, named Miller's, and these were lids that they would have used in production of their little cups, and this is how it was when I was a kid, 
so I don't know how old these are, but I got a lot of them. But don't they look like they could be a Christmas ornament? I hate to mess up the nostalgia of this side, but I'm thinking about painting. If I can get some paint on here that won't wet up and ruin this, I'll try a couple. Yes, that's a good idea with the bird nest. Um, but see, this this is small, so I'm uh, just I'm gonna. I bought 20 of them. They were 10 for a dollar. So. Um, but doesn't it look like it could be a good, you know, ornament of some sort? If not, I'll just glue them all down side by side and make a nostalgia product project out of it. Maybe I can find an old Miller's Ice Cream Company truck or something <laughs> to, to go with it. But anyway, that's, that's my haul. And um, let me show you. Just before I, I go, this will be the thing that I'm going to be working on, and I'll show you the other stuff I got. Let me see if I can bring you over here. There won't be any light. This is um, this is the sign that I'm buying from a uh, favored nest. It's one of the ladies here in our market. It says, uh, "Then sings my soul." Love that song. Um, and I went to the Dollar Tree at lunch. Um, because I, and I probably have better ribbon in my thing, but I kind of thought this darker may go good in the bow. It's not going to be something that'll stay on this once it gets to your house. But I had bought this to make a bird's nest with because I forgot about those new bird's nests. Um, bought this little bird because it's kind of in fall colors to match the leaves and my best friend loves sunflowers and yellow is her favorite color. And I bought these two ribbons to hopefully put together because the tone isn't exactly the same with this green, but maybe after I have a bird, a bird's nest, and all of this stuff in it going over one corner, um, it'll do good. And then I bought some raffia. I'll probably use this neutral colored one through the middle <clears throat> to decorate up the piece and, and make it special just for her. So. I'm going to work on that. Um, that would be cute with the bird's nest on it. But um, I, I appreciate y'all coming in. I'm not wanting to mess up anybody's massage in back. So I'm going to get off of here for a little while. And hopefully maybe after lunch I'll come back on. And we'll um, put some more of the IOD molds on some Christmas ornaments. I have four like big ornaments and I'm really wanting to put a lot of fancy stuff on that. And I don't know whether I'll go live on my YouTube channel with that and then share it here, whether I'll go live here, but I'll give y'all notification of it. It'll be shared here either way. But um, yeah, if you, you know, watch for, if you want to catch the IOD molds and if you don't know what I'm talking about, in case you haven't seen that, I'll walk over here real quick. I did these on a live the other day and these are some of the this is just a clear glass ornament uh, then painted after a, a paper clay mold was put on and same thing here and I have all of these different molds and things to use so I'm going to do some pretty good sized ones to put on the larger ornaments and I'm probably just going to use the paper clay because that's uh, quicker than the amazing resin as far as me being able to control when it's ready to go on the ornament and the ornament being able and it being able to mold while it's still wet onto the roundness of the ornament and stay so if you're interested in that watch I'll be doing uh, I'll send out an alert on that one if I do it live on this page. Um, so if you've signed up for our alert, you'll get a message in your messenger on that. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.